Okay, we should be streaming. This is rough. <laughs> it's okay though. We're almost ready to go. And we got no webcam tonight. We're on Wirecast. And what you're looking at is a nighttime video. Hang on a second, folks. What you're looking at is a webcam from last night. And I got a video coming up here in a second. I'm just waiting for the stream to start. Okay, there we go, we're streaming. That's good, so you had a little echo that time, that would have been from the, the laptop they're picking up, the little tiny speaker. And I got this video imported, we're using Wirecast, and the credibility for this goes out to Kevin Blanche and his crew and uh, activists out there. Then we had Miss Milky put it up. That's how I found it. And here's a picture of me. You gotta like that one. That's a friend of mine done up uh, on the internet a couple of years ago. <laughs> I always get a good laugh out of it. Unfortunately, we haven't got very much to laugh about tonight. I'm gonna start it off and I'm just gonna jump right in. David Suzuki. That the fear is that there's another earthquake of a seven or above that that building will go and then all hell breaks loose. And the probability of a seven or above earthquake in the next three years is over 95%. I have seen a paper which says that if in fact the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye bye Japan and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. And so those words now carry weight. You got to remember that Unit 4, you're looking at it right now. I'm going to show you the video, a clip from last night's video. And we'll get that stream in there. And you probably can't see it very well. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Now you can see the plume coming across. And you can see the red in the middle. See that? Now you think about how big the site is. The smoke is coming right at the camera. So it's pretty obvious from this picture, this video you're watching, that the entire site now has to be evacuated and that it's contaminated. And this is Unit 4 at... Uh, Kevin Blanche is adamant about that. This isn't important what we're looking at here because of what Suzuki says stands true. This plume at 100 miles an hour in the jet streams uh, was 2,400 miles. Two and a half days it's in North America. We'll just let that fin peter out a little bit. That's what we believe is Unit 4. It's Fukushima nuclear power plant with a vicious, massive flames shooting uh, hundreds and hundreds of feet across we have smoke enveloping it and now the smoke blew past it we don't know which directions the winds were blowing there and we say uh, hi to everybody for a few moments we got carlos tkc toxic missing sky shining home la jake any HD, fluoride, Annabeck, Franco, James, Toxic, Original Punisher, Paul Westerfield, Patrick, Nuts for Art, and I'm just, we're live streaming on YouTube with Beautiful Girl by Dana. We've been having a lot of problems the last couple of weeks, but I think I got most of the big ones solved. Is the audio good, folks? Is there any stuttering going on when I was playing videos and stuff that you've seen before? Probably not, right? And we got a lot to cover here tonight. Mitchell Gordon, uh, fit 521. Nepkiller. Nepkiller thinks it was a truckload of bananas, buckyballs. And somebody dropped, uh, it was sitting in the sunshine, of course, because of radiation sunshine. And a bottle of water probably got at an iPhone charger. I can't remember because I read the comment 10 minutes ago. 
and that wreaked the havoc, and that's why we had that big friggin' fire. So what year we got going on in Fukushima is they had an earthquake and then a tsunami. They had detonations and meltdowns. And I'll just walk you right through that fairly fast. And we'll try to slow things down a bit so everybody can digest it. This is Unit 1. And I want you to think about, uh, I can't remember, this is New York Times, I believe, uh, Asian correspondent. He was hosting the Asian nuclear talks. And uh, I was probably the only one ever watched that video. And I heard him say, um, my name is Martin Fackler. I am the Tokyo Bureau Chief. And the, the title, as we just heard, was Challenges and Opportunities After the Fukushima Nuclear Disaster. This crisis management. And, and the question of what do you tell your public? You know, I mean, I, you know, do, you, do you tell them that there's a serious nuclear accident or do you play it down? Do you try to cover it up? Um, well, we pay people to uh, watch for it and then inform us. That's what we got out of government and we pay all these bills. We have the EPA. Their, their job is to protect us, not to hide it away. Now, I want you to think about, there was a model came out of Japan. This is Unit 2 you're looking at. And just for context, let me go back and show you uh, Unit 1 one more time, just to refresh your memory. So that's Unit 1. Now, over to Unit, Unit 1 lost its top. It's 100% meltdown. Fuel pools are missing on the top and it's in dire strait. Nobody can get in the building. Over a million sievers outside of that place. There's rods everywhere. 500 sievers will kill you. It'll kill you. You walk past that. Two weeks later, you're just a big, dead lump of flesh. No offense. Now, Japan put out a model on their TV within 30 days about that unit. Unit, I'm sorry, uh, let me bring it up for you. Unit 2. There's Unit 2. I meant to flip it over for you. Now here's the study. A new computer simulation shows how radioactivity is spread around the world. That simulation is based on the scenario in which contaminated air was vented from the disabled number two reactor building on March 14th, three days after the massive earthquake and tsunami. Computer images show the radioactive material was lifted 5,000 meters into the air. It was then carried by westerly winds and spread over the Pacific Ocean. The images indicate that on the fourth day after the being, being vented, the substances reached the west coast of the United States, and on the, on the seventh day, they approached Iceland after crossing the Atlantic. A new... After crossing the Atlantic. That's a staggering, staggering word. Now, this is Unit 3 you're looking at. That's a 100% meltdown. That was Mox Fuel. And he talked about this Harvard and Yale and Stanford and... New York Times and everybody else in the first couple of days was talking about the Mox fuel. It's real. It's not imaginary uh, because of the fuel they're using there is from reactors. It's from the melted down reactors. And it looks like everything is good. Uh, loud and clear. Good sound. Sounds good, Dana. Uh, I miss Milky. Uh, Stacy Anderson, Starlight, Stephen, everybody, Julie, Pia Jensen, Jill Clarkson. I see Grandma Goldie was there earlier. Stacy Anderson, Kathy Reed, everybody. Let's keep going. My comments are moving too fast for me. I'm thirst, new to ways, piano precious. Okay, let's keep rolling there because we got a lot to cover here. And this is important that we get a very basis started before I get into the rest of it. Mr. I can see everybody, Annabeck, uh, Lori, and uh, oh my, Miss Milky. Yeah, great pictures. You like that, Miss Milky? This is coming out pretty good tonight. I'm looking forward to watching this after and seeing if there's anything you need to fix up. Tomorrow I should have a webcam installed. And it's six computers in six months. It's going to bankrupt me at this rate. But anyway, um, we've got to keep marching on. So now this uh, coming up is Unit 4. This is the one we're talking about. Now, obviously. That building is in a lot of trouble, right? That's a lot of trouble. You agree? Now, just for context, unit four is the one in the bottom left-hand corner. So one, two, three, and four. Excuse me. Now, they all had detonations, every one of them. They all had detonations. And... 
Uh, Unit 4 was on fire several times. Unit 3, excuse me. Do you think Unit 3 had a nuclear explosion? We're not going to ninny over that stuff because it blew pieces of the rods up to a couple of miles away. Uh, Fukushima, they're putting, see these guys, they're making their own lead belts. There were 600,000 of them went there in Chernobyl. And they went through that many men, that much equipment, so that people wouldn't have long-term health, long-term exposure. So a lot of these people originally went in there just for a few seconds, 15 to 20 seconds, and then they went home and never went on a site again. And that way they were able to distribute the dose out. In Fukushima, they sent in the homeless. And so we got a lot of issues because these are three 100% meltdowns. Chernobyl, Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl was one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. And Unit 3 is um, two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. You're looking at Unit 3, well, what's left of Unit 3, and these reactors are right on the ocean. So right away we got huge issues. I'm getting to Unit 4, so slow down for a second. I just want to make sure you get everybody on the right page. And that's... The currents in the ocean is uh, traveling, say, at two miles an hour. That's 50 square miles a day, every day for over 1,160 days. 50 miles each day, another 50 miles next day, another 50 miles. There's a 1,000 pounds a minute hemorrhaging into that ocean. And, of course, it can't sustain that. And it's just, it came out of the air from those melted reactors. That was sustained. You can see the middle picture. That was NOAA. Noah had done a model, and he hid it away, and it finally got out there, like a lot of the models. And uh, most of the governments around the world created these same types of models with these same kind of predictions. Now, this was based up on Unit 1. The one I showed you before from the Japanese interview was on Unit 2 only. And you can see that plane didn't uh, tear apart like Unit 1, Unit 3, and Unit 4. But you can see this, that Noah, the Noah model of the dispersal of the aerosols that was just based upon Unit 1. And Unit 1 went down really fast. And let me hit some numbers for you. Let me sit on this for a second. A leaked TEPCO report, 120 billion becquels of plutonium, 7.6 trillion becquels of Neptunium released in the first 100 hours. That's not counting the uranium, the strontium, and the other radioactive isotopes. There's uh, many models that came out. I can't remember who done this. This was another government model off the top of my head for some reason. I usually know what this one is. But once again, this is only based upon a short release from a single reactor at Fukushima. And as I just showed you, all the reactors. Now, the first 100 hours, that uh, was 120 billion becquels just out of that one reactor. See? That's the importance of it. Now, I'm going to move up to Unit 4 again in a second here uh, but uh, first i want you to i want um, you so to realize really, i'm just going to go through a timeline of what we know happened we all know of course that there was that, an earthquake um, but something in, like in an six hour days later, mit had came out with the speech there was no power for it at the site and the country was devastated so it was very hard to access the plant at 2100 that day uh, evacuation to three kilometers radius was ordered. The following in the afternoon, there was a hydrogen explosion in, building of, in the building of Reactor 1. Uh, not long after, the evacuation zone was extended to 20 kilometers radius. What happened during Sunday appears to have been substantial efforts to get circulation and cooling um, going again, but with, these were uns, insufficient, and it was decided to pump in borated seawater uh, to flood the primary um, containment. On Monday at 11 a.m., so this is now uh, in, on the third day, um, there was a, a hydrogen explosion of building of Reactor 3. 11 people were reported injured. In the meantime, Reactor 2, which had up until that stage been uh, cooled or at some level, was found to have fuel rods, what is reported to have been fully uncovered. So Reactor 2 no longer had successful cooling, and they quite 
soon began to inject water borated seawater water. In fact, it seems like they got water in and then it came out again. At 6.14 a.m. on Tuesday, that's today, of course, but, but since they're um, uh, 13 hours ahead of us, that, that was quite a while ago now, um, there was a third explosion. This was in Reactor 2, and as a result, the containment was breached. It's unknown how great that containment breach is, but it's a very bad thing as in plant worker evacuation begin. On that same day was that the Reactor 4 building, Reactor 4 is adjacent to Reactor 3, uh, was observed to be a, a, a flame, and um, so this was sort of at the same time that radiation levels were increasing further. There was a lot of suspicion that this fire was in the spent fuel pool. Um, However, since that time, TEPCO has said that there was an oil leak in a water pump and that that was what was, was the cause of the fire uh, at reactor building um, four. By the way, these fuel pools are 30 uh, feet deep. Um, they're in the reactor buildings, um, but they're outside the containment. Um, it's okay for their water to boil, uh, but the elements must remain covered. Uh, if they uncover, they're likely to overheat. Um, TEPCO says that the fire or said on one occasion that the fire was extinguished at noon, so that's not very long after. Um, IAEA says that they were informed that the fire was um, extinguished at five o'clock in the afternoon. So that's really um, where things stand, and I'm going to leave it to... So unit four, that's the one you see straight ahead of you. Now, that detonated, you just heard MIT talking about how it detonated and on fire and everything else. I want you to listen to CBS, Seth Dorn. He claims he's inside the same building that you're looking at right now. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. Now, you can't get less than a check x-ray, okay? Because uh, you're ingesting radioactive particles, you get an x-ray every second of your life. Now, what, he sh what you're looking at right now, he claims that's inside of there, that those fuel pools are the same. Somehow, that fuel pool and this fuel pool can magically exist inside of this, or per se, uh, inside of that. Now, you won't see any scaffolding. You're not going to see anybody with cutting torches. You're just going to see Sith with these magic pictures and a roof that looks like Molly Maid put it in there. And you can't get inside of these buildings. And that's Unit 4, they're claiming. And they're also claiming that's Unit 4. And if you go down below my video, you will find uh, 2,000 pictures at TEPCO's website. And this will be one of them. So... What's going on here? They, they came out in the last couple of months, CBS, CBC, ABC, BBC, everybody, and claimed that Unit 4 was pretty, was gorgeous. But in reality, it's extremely destroyed and unstable. I want you to listen to what Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution just for a minute. We heard about bananas and we shouldn't make the comparison, but I think actually I disagree a little bit. You know, if we look at the radioactivity and the response, these are beta emitters that have similar energies, and so we actually can make some comparisons. But the point here on this slide is that there's much smaller amounts of radiation in the ocean that we can measure than are generally considered harmful to us. We heard about bananas and we shouldn't make the comparison, but I... Right, and you shouldn't make the comparison because these are radioactive particles. This is a model shown just to cesium-137. There was up to 100 times more strontium-90. Just as scary, probably more scary, because it goes right to the bones and you can't treat those types of cancers. Well, you can with water, structured water, and you can um, with organic food. And I'll cover a bit more of that later. But when Ken, Ken compares that to a banana then you really got to wonder what is going on. Now, Unit 4. Unit 4, once again, what Suzuki said, if that goes, then we got huge issues on this planet. Japan is finished, and we got, um, let me bring up a picture of that at one point. 
time. I want to watch that video where we're talking one more time. So the link is below. That's a, you can see the orange. And that didn't exist for the first minute of the video. And then that shows up and that moves right across. All the smoke shows up at the same time. This, this was a detonation that caused this kind of eruption, a fireball to go that distance and then smoke to travel that fast and, and be that thick. That, that, that's indicative of an uh, explosion. This was a live cam streamed from TEPCO's webcam and then archived on YouTube in three minute increments. And so it was live. And everybody is saying the same thing that we got. Now Japan has implemented a law where the journalists can't talk about this. And we've seen Save Kids Japan uh, .ca or .com, .ca, there's a link below my video to that site because I think she's a great lady. Miss Milky has that video up on her site, Save Kids Japan. You really should go watch it. Extraordinary soul. What a wonderful soul she is. Just amazing. Um, but Fukushima now has left us with a huge issue where we can't find anybody talking about what happened there they're not coming out and saying, oh, it was, uh, you know, butterflies or something got into the light and reflected it. And they're all okay. We went out and counted them all and checked their fitters because butterflies got fitters, right? At least in their context. So we have been manipulated and lied to constantly. Uh, think about the iPhone charge lady. Listen. listen. I charge my iPhone every single night. I charge my iPad every single night. And but she charges her iPhone charger every night, so it's all good. Now, Unit Four gives us. I'm just going to show you this chart one more time. This is only based upon a short release from Fukushima. So what you're missing out of this study, out of this uh, model router, and this is from a, uh, I'm not sure if it was France or Switzerland or Norway or one of these institutions on the other side said, hey, now you can see how the model broke up and now there's another release. So they're modeling another small release, but it didn't stop releasing like that for the first year. So you can imagine how much actually went up into our environment and how much is out there already from Fukushima. And that David Suzuki it was only going by what he heard all the other experts say, that if Unit 4 goes, then bye-bye Japan, and you're going to have to evacuate North America. Japan will fight to the debt to hide that. Right away, you got to realize for 1100 60 plus days this is the picture you're looking at is like St. Paddy's Day and consider that one minute what you're looking at takes one minute to replicate well it doesn't stop at Fukushima it just doesn't stop coming out of there uh, oh, I was waiting for that picture it's hemorrhaging out of there um, 400 to say 800 tons a minute probably a thousand um, a day rather Say a thousand tons a day. Say four hundred tons a day. That's confirmed over and over. And as that spreads out, it's not like it's just a simple release where it just goes out and stops. This stuff can't stop. And the life in the ocean can't sustain a beating like that. And we we are ignoring it and turn our head, you know, turn our head around and not look at it. Is not going to help. We got to deal with that. Now that we got Unit 4 in heart attack mode, it means Japan once again is going to get slaughtered, destroyed, and that's going to, that aerosol is going to come hit us tomorrow night or the next morning. So the plume that's coming out of there all day yesterday or last night and today is going to hit us tomorrow and the next day and the day after and the day after. And the disposition across the country, North America itself, is going to work its way right back to the coastline. And the marine life, we go down, we check kelp, but we don't go down and get all these creatures that live on our shoreline and check them. 
Now, there's a few reasons we don't do that. In some places, there's uh, predators. And you want a Coke? Punk? I got a whole bunch of Coke over here. You're welcome to. <laughs> and so you, you don't really care if there's much radiation in that area because you care, but you're just afraid to stay there. So I can imagine people not going to stay there. But we can check our food. And we had studies here where one in Canada, just a school, a student, went down with her dad's Geiger counter and done a study over a long period and found 12, 1,400 beckles in food. The disposition from it, the fallout from it, the nuclear fallout washes down to the coastlines. The marine creatures are going to be the first to tell us what's going on, right? And, but we're not looking at that. We're not looking at them. It's like they don't even exist. We claim that we're legally allowed to have 7,400 becquels of potassium-40 in our drinking water. And now we're allowed to have, according to the EPA, 7,400 becquels cubic meter in our drinking water, cesium-137. But Woods Hole and people like that can't find anything for some reason. Hang on. Um, let's get Kim Busler, Woods Hole apologist, one more time. So we've been saying for about two years that there's a continuous source much smaller. And let's put that in context of regulation limits. Japanese were saying, well, they didn't have any leaks. I think they were looking at their regulatory limits. You're allowed to put about uh, 60,000 becquerels per cubic meter in the ocean by their regulation. Uh, this is our drinking water limit. In Japan, it's about 10,000. That's what you're allowed to drink. I put a banana on the scale here. These are relatively similar to the natural radionuclides in the ocean. So he's saying that you can put all of that stuff in the water. Thanks, mass sterilization. You can put all that stuff in the water because of the drinking water standards. But there is no such thing as that. They created that since Fukushima. And Japan has increased their drinking water's standards 20 times. 20 times. Now, when they sprayed salt water in those reactors originally, they created these, what you see now is like a buckyball. And there's a study down below that I, you sh if you don't are not familiar with it, you really need to check it out. And this uh, ingests radioactive particles, which is even scarier because uh, melted cores can make particles forever plus the, the neutrons and the x-rays and the, you know splitting the atoms and then the gammas, the betas, and the alphas. And Canada got called out for that. It got called out repeatedly. A cheap and expensive powder that costs just pennies a dose. You typically get this eureka kind of... Uh... Sorry, um, we're going to play that clip actually right now, and that clip uh, is about cancer, it's about DCA, and so you won't be able to hear, uh, my, my audio cuts out, I don't have my audio in on it, so I can't mess it up, but I want you to listen to this clip about cancer, and about DCA, and this is a Canadian program, and I think it's probably the most important video that you'll ever watch because of Fukushima. So here we go. Feeling, and it's actually the most exciting thing a scientist can get. The drug called DCA, in short, has been used for decades in humans with some rare inherited diseases. When he added it to the water of mice and rats given human cancers, the results surprised him. And has this uh, big tumor growing in, in his back. So you can see that even after three weeks, there is a significant or 70% decrease in tumor size. It shrunk brain, breast... So, it's, I'm going to go back to that clip in a second here, but it's shrunk all the cancers by 70% in three weeks. He's shown them there. That's how it on TV. It only showed up once, but his studies stand true, and there's a link to that below, DCA, and you can buy that food grade. It's just a mineral. You don't need a pharmaceutical prescription. There's no patent on it. And so let's keep watching it for a minute. Lung tumors in the animals in a matter of weeks. And the drug had no side effects, confirmed by tests of DCA in humans for other diseases. This kind of results, to my mind, are as good as, as it gets. And it seems to work by reviving the energy-producing components of human cells, allowing the cells to work normally again, 
triggering cancer cells to commit suicide. Scientists agree that DCA now needs to be tested quickly in human cancer patients. But there's a problem. DCA isn't owned by any pharmaceutical company. There's no patent on it. So on one hand, it could become a very inexpensive new treatment for cancer. On the other, drug companies won't be interested in funding studies for a drug that won't make them a profit. A cheap, inexpensive... A cheap and inexpensive cure for cancer. And so what that does is it, it unplates your blood, and structured water does the same thing. And I, I follow structured water a lot. You can actually change the structure. Scientists know how to change it. They just don't know why it changes. And you can get that from mountain or spring water, anywhere where it never ran through man-made machines and pumps and, uh, you know, pipes and everything. Where it ran natural to the ground or down mountains, that's considered structured water. And it's got like 40,000 times more energy. But it unplates your blood. And that's such an important clip for everybody to get. And now that we got this working, I'll start importing all my cancer stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So we had a meltdowns, a three meltdowns, and number four reactor. Once again, number four reactor, they've been saying in the last couple of months that it looked like that. But it actually looks like that. I'm sorry. And it looks like this. That's the pool according to the media, and you get the pictures below, and that's the pool, according to the media recently. They're saying it looks like that inside, and inside of this building, that it looks like that. That's number four. And now we have a massive fire. Now we have massive carnage, and that nobody is able to come out and say definitively what burnt or what happened, which probably means Unit 4, right? If they got nothing to hide, why not come out and explain it? Why not say, oh, we had an accident, and uh, thank goodness it wasn't this or that. Well, they've been hiding it since October the 25th, 2013, right? They shut down the Internet, and we covered that extensively originally. There was an Internet blackout, and still is, and you see... Um, that blogger I was talking about earlier, Save Kids Japan. Well, she got .ca. And it's so hard to find anybody from Japan. Anybody you do find from Japan is not going to be talking about this. Right? And if you do, then police will travel a thousand miles because they tweeted about it, like Save Kids Japan. Right? Miss Milky got that video over there. That's such an important video. And let me keep going here. And what I was going to talk about. Once again, let's run you right through everything one more time. Get everything fresh back in your mind. That's unit one. It detonated. 100% meltdown. It's three times the size of Chernobyl. And all these reactors, according to Fox News, had plutonium in it originally. This is unit two. And I moved unit three. Nope. And this is Unit 3, and this is Unit 4. And according to the media, in the last couple of months, they're saying that everything is pretty. They're saying everything is sweet. They're saying there's nothing to worry about. Worry. The Hang on. of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our... Well, Reactor 4 blew apart. Right? Nobody's going to deny that except for CBS and CBC and NBC and ABC and all the other bootleg and cheerleading nuclear apologists on this planet, the nuclear critters. And so once again, <coughs> excuse me, one, two, three, and four are hemorrhaging into the ocean. Now, number four tonight, we're saying that it's 100% gone. And that Japan knew this was going to happen. They have earthquakes around 1,000 to 5,000 a year along that coastline. How could that not happen to them, right? How could the building not go down? The building is already destroyed. It's completely destroyed. You, people can live in a fable, but we can't. So that stuff is headed our way. You have to think that way because they're not going to tell you any different. And so expect 
you know, the apologists to roll out trying to do damage control because we're not going to give them any quarter. We're not going to give them rooms to wiggle. And they can't keep fabricating like Seth Dorn did for CBS and everybody else. Uh, the buildings, you can see Unit 3 and Unit 4. That's completely destroyed. How can we sit here? How can we sit here and pretend that everything is okay? like they're trying to do, and at the same time ignore all the other melted reactors. I mean, they're saying it looks like that inside. It does not look anywhere like that. I mean, that's the fuel pool, and that's the fuel pool number four. They're both number four. One of them are not number four. Uh, no matter how we try to spin this, they got nothing to do with each other, right? And so, let me see what we got going on here. Was that another, yeah, that was a clip. That's that stream. You'll find a link below to it. You'll see all the orange appearing in the middle. It'll get brighter and brighter. Also, I got the wrong clip in there. Yeah, okay, I see. The video continues wherever you left off, and I jumped off it. So we'll just let it play through, and we'll start again here in a second. I mean, I think that's fascinating that we can see it. There you go. Let me bring it up a bit bigger for everybody. Do you think for a second that on a massive site like that, and you can see all the smoke coming out of there, everything getting obscured by it, uh, you can see the orange in the background, uh, if this could have been a fuel pool over there? Is the fuel pool over there? I can't remember. I'm going to have to go do my homework tonight. But you know what their instant reaction is, right? You can hear it, uh, Martin. Um, my name is Martin Fackler. I am the Tokyo Bureau Chief. And the title, as we just heard, was Challenges and Opportunities After the Fukushima Nuclear Disaster, this crisis management. And, and the question of what do you tell your public? You know, I mean, uh, you know, do, you, do you tell them that there's a serious nuclear accident or do you play it down? Do you try to cover it up? Uh, well, that's what they've done since they started was covered it up. Even though I showed you that clip of MIT, we got clips up here of Stanford and Harvard on the 15th and the 16th talking about unit 1, 2, and 3 are dead and, and number 4 is in heart attack mode and had detonations. And ever since that, the apologists at, like Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution have been out there apologizing and lying and equating it with bananas walking in the sunshine equating it with uh, insignificant, indigenous, normal, everyday things in your life, right? And so they claim that there's radiation in your food. But if you eat it, it's homeostasis. You off-gas it. You can't get any more natural radiation than your body already contains. So as you eat it, you off-gas the exact same amount. A banana got 12 barrels, you off-gas 12 barrels. But right now your steak might have, uh, say, a 1,000, Beckwell's disintegrations of cesium-137, and I mentioned everything else, like 90 times, 100 times more strontium-90 per kilogram. And 50 Beckwell's a kilogram will cause permanent uh, lesions to your organs. Okay, let me see if I can go down a whole bunch of fast headlines and finish the night off. OEA, OEA informed in March that number one reactor core started melting about 50 minutes after the cooling stopped. There was a melted pile of fuel in three to five hours. It was impossible that the bolt of the melted fuel is in the unit one containment. That was October 15, 2012. Nuclear engineer on February 26, 2013 had proof that fuel fragments were sneezed out of unit one. And once again, let me bring up some of these as I'm talking about them. And I'll finish it off uh, soon enough here. It's going to be a short night because we're struggling to get all of this stuff to work for us. But that's Unit 1. And most people don't know, but Reactor 1 melted down in five hours. Five hours after loss of cooling because of the tsunami, right? Because it had a massive tsunami come through there. And then it had meltdowns and detonations. And now, Unit 4. Now I'm going to jump over to Unit 4 headlines. Hang on. 
Unit three, unit four, got it. Oh, I got a number four, it's not unit four though. Oh, oh, okay, hang on. Reactor one melted down in five hours. Hang on, folks. There was a hundred million Beckwolds per cubic centimeter, a radioactivity estimated for Fukushima sludge, June the 10th, 2011. So that, ex that site is extraordinarily contaminated. It's extraordinary. Uh, spent fuel pool in reactor four is damaged and leaking very fast. UK top scientific officer, March the 17th, 2011. Japan confirms full meltdown at all three reactors, June the 6th, 2011. And Unit 4 was the fable to distract you, and they never mention it again, right? But uh, that was CNN. You can look it up. Explosion may have incurred inside a vessel of Fukushima Unit 1 and can generate missiles that endanger containment's integrity around it because uh, the, the rods were traveling up to a mile away easy, they found fragments 35 miles away. They felt the detonation of Unit uh, 3. Let me bring it up a picture, because that's a beauty. That They felt that, uh, AP reporter felt that 25 kilometers away. Unit 4, this detonated a couple of times. Do anybody have a problem with that? Is anybody saying, no, Dana, the building looks fine. The roof is fine. It's just air cooled. It's got big air cooled reactors in there, Dana. And the people who had the contract, they were drunk. And they were high on uh, GMO food, GMO little creatures. And this was actually an art installation. This wasn't a detonation of Unit 4. Dana, this was an art installation. And all those wires hang and got nothing to do with Unit 4's fuel pull. Because as we know, everything is fine. See? Look at that. I mean, hang on. We don't want you to see that picture. We want you to see this picture. Because that's pretty. And it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. So it's easy to use. I mean, how can you get from that pool to that pool without no, you know, you would have to eat up all the homeless on the planet. You could stuff all the homeless on the planet and you still couldn't stop the hemorrhaging into the ocean of these reactors. But now we got airborne coming out of there. It's out of from the, the spent fuel pour, storage pool. It could be one of the tanks detonated. It could be a unit four, of course, because that was the, the, the scary thing. And hang on, I'll bring up that picture just so we can squeak along on that. Let me get up another unit four here. Now here's another headline, October 16, 2012. Up to a million sieve, sievers, S-I-E-V-E-R-T-S, per hour, outside of Unit 1. So imagine, that's like, well, here's another one. 220 million becquels a liter of cesium. Now in the number two, spent fuel pool. Number one, two, and three clearly have significant spent fuel damage. Spent fuel, the pools that were on the roof. Um, hang on. So the pools that was on the roof of that, they don't, they're not there no more, right? The pool that's in there somewhere, allegedly now, uh, one of the pools are still intact. They think it's underneath all that stuff there because that's the crane for lifting the rods out of the pool. So what, what's all that dirt mean? But there was a serious meltdown at number four. That was number four. That's number four. That, that's some serious carnage. You can't get in there for 100 years because of the rods are everywhere. So you're getting the neutrons and the x-rays right there on the spot. It's pelted from projectiles like we were just talking about in that headline. So, yeah, clearly they got significant. Clearly, hang on. Let me look at that headline one more time. That's unit four. And so it's been a fable. See, they can't get and clean it up, and so now it's finally collapsed. And now we have massive radia radiation releases, and they might not be on that site anywhere. They might lose the entire friggin' site for all we know. We got a webcam from last night. You'll find a link below. And let me get another headline. 
Flashback. Broken pieces and nuclear fuel rods were found outside of Reactor 2, covered up by bulldozers. That ain't going to help you because it rains and snows and they're perpetually pouring water on that place. Oh, and now AP journalist feels massive explosion in number three nuclear plant from 25 miles away. I wonder if there was a detonation on that one. No, it's too bad that that video below doesn't have audio. That would be cool. Hang on, here we go. Do, do, do. Uh, no, can't find that. But I just want, I'm just trying to build a picture for everybody how much trouble is already going on in that plant. Because we don't have a lot of information on Unit 4, what happened there, but you're looking at a picture of it. And uh, the, the aerosol also falls into the ocean, right? And so that was a model just on a single release. We could use the same model for Unit 4 release because we got a model already from NOAA and other institutions of a single release at Fukushima. We've seen the explosion and the fire repeatedly here tonight. And so we could use this 40-day model by NOAA using a standard modeling and a known amount as a release as a comparison to what we can expect in the next coming couple of uh, months from that massive release we see in that video. The media is silent and right now this is this is worrisome. This is to be feared. And we need information and we need to get out there and push back on these people. Because like you say, they're just gonna talk about I charge my iPad every single night. I touch that cord, I move that cord, I don't feel a tingle, I don't feel a shock. And if I lick that And if you lick that cord, you look as stupid as you sound. So it's a short stream tonight. I just wanted to get the kinks out of the system. I'm not going to keep going because I'm starting to repeat myself. <laughs> Tomorrow night I'll be better prepared if everything goes half reasonable. Looks like I got all the kinks out of it. New computer it should be the kinks out of it. It's been a rough day. Oh, 300 updates or whatever. Blah, it's like six months of this. So this one, as soon as I'm off the ear, I'm going to pull the plug <laughs> off the internet. See if I can keep this one for a couple of months. It's getting expensive, and this is a very expensive computer. But hopefully all the streams came out good tonight. Um, that's about it, I guess. We'll just let it go with that. I covered that little the video, picture you're looking at of the study. Let's roll back up to the picture uh, once again. Let's listen to what Davis Suzuki had to say. It's only a 20-second clip. That the fear is if there's another earthquake of a seven or above, that that building will go, and then all hell breaks loose. And the probability of a seven or above earthquake in the next three years is over 95%. I have seen a paper which says that if, in fact, the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye-bye Japan, and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. That the fear is... Well, there you go. Okay, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Um, I really want to get the webcam working with this program. And i got to import a whole lot more and get the kinks out of this, so this will take me 10 or 12 hours tonight and tomorrow. And But hopefully by then, that'll be the end of it, and we'll be able to just, you know, have the normal streams and bring in pictures as we need them and go back to the stream, right? And so that'll be a hell of a lot nicer. All right, very folks. Good night, everybody. I'm not going to try to stay yellow. Good night to everybody because uh, I'm in an awkward position here. I just got to relieve my body by stopping. <laughs> and so here's the closer. We'll catch everybody later.